Today on World Talks, we're at the Europe Future Forum put on by uh, the Weissgrad Insight. And now joining me is Aud Mayo Kolisch. I hope I got this right, but I'd like to introduce you even further, the Director for Strategic Communications and Foresight at the European External Action Service, which is the EU's diplomatic service. Thank you very much for joining us today on TVP World. Thank you very much for inviting me. Now, um, you've, you're attending this forum, the Europe Future Forum, and uh, well, I'd like to talk about that in today's interview. So how are you finding the discussion so far uh, here at the venue? Well, actually, it is really the right moment to have such a forum, and we're very grateful that we've been invited because it is also in terms of preparation of the future Polish presidency of the European Union, which will start next January. So it's important for those who work with the European institution to already have an idea and form our mind to what would be the uh, uh, priorities of the uh, Polish presidency and. Uh, Beyond that, you know, we are in a foresight event, so it's really the way of thinking. And uh, it's also important we can, of course, interact with our po Polish uh, colleagues uh, in Brussels, they are very well represented. But being here in Warsaw is also very good to have a sense. Uh, you always have to feel things. So we are very grateful for this forum to take place. And uh, concerning those issues, I, I think uh, EU expansion is probably one of those on the, t on the top priorities for, uh, for Poland as it assumes the presidency. Um, uh, can you comment on any of the issues that you see uh, being a priority for Poland? Yes, we talked a lot about enlargement and it was very interesting for me to, to listen to the high level speakers we had on this occasion uh, and from different uh, countries also uh, who have acceded to the EU uh, now 20 years ago and, uh, and have this perspective. And what I, I mean, as a, a responsible for strategic communication in the, the EU diplomatic service, I'm also very much interested in looking at this uh, issue with the, the prism of the foreign interference and manipulation of information, which is uh, actually what we've worked on at the ES to identify where the manipulation of our information environment can have an influence on how we're doing policy making and how citizens live this. So in the context of enlargement, this also plays a role. How the current EU citizens see future member states and how in potential future member states uh, in candidate countries, there are, there are those kind of manipulation of information taking place to um, modify uh, the way people may think about their countries being in the EU. So I am personally looking very much into that, uh, that perspective. And we had the chance, in addition to the official program, to have some foresight sessions. And we had one on, on how strategic uh, communication, how manipulation of information can have an, influence, have an influence. We've listened to a new initiative by the Lithuanian government uh, to create a fund to support media, uh, which is completely independent. Uh, so they gave the fund and, and then there is support to media because we need f um, free media in order to have societies with an information integrity in place. So this is all uh, the, the kind of topic we are, we are talking about. Um, now disinformation is obviously something that uh, countries here in this region are particularly focused on, but even a wider uh, issue. And we've seen this, of course, big election year uh, here in Europe, around the world really, uh, but the European uh, Union elections. How, how can the continent really uh, deal with the disinformation that is uh, being unleashed while at the same time we embrace uh, free and independent media? Yes, this is a very vast question, but that's exactly what we've been working on at the European External Action Service to first defining what we mean by this information, because we do not want to enter in disinformation laws that have been uh, used by some authoritarian regime to just suppress voices mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and dissent. No, we, so we've, we, what we're looking at is this concept of foreign interference manipulation of information which means that we are not looking at the narrative in first hand, in the sense that we're, everyone has a right to say something wrong. Let's say it's freedom of expression. What we're looking at is how this information, being wrong, right or wrong, has come 
to your information environment. How is that it has reached you? And if we see that this has been manipulated in the sense, for example, creating false accounts, uh, pouring with a different, uh, at the same time on the different channels, and then impersonating through, uh, main media. Uh, or there are lots of techniques, tactics, and procedures that we are we are studying, and we are exposing this uh, what is happening. And um, I think that. Uh, we don't like to be manipulated. Whatever we think, we'd like to be, to be genuine. So we are looking at this manipulative behavior. And what we've seen is that there has been some manipulation of, of information for a long time now to, in fact, to sow distrust in societies, to sow distrust vis-a-vis -vis the governmental authorities, to polar polarize societies. And that's what we need to fight against. Uh, because this is really affecting the way we live. So in the context of uh, an election year, we've been ex particularly uh, active in looking at what's, what's going on. So I can take the example of the European elections, of, of course, as the European body. We've worked with the European Parliament, with the European Commission, in order to try to detect first, we, of course, we need to see what the narrative, so that when we see a narrative that we've, we see that is not genuine, we are really investigating how this was created, how this was, uh, this was um, yes, disseminated, etc., in order to be able to, to, to see what's going on, in order to be able to respond. And there I enter into a different work we're doing, is how to respond. How exactly. do we fight against foreign interference and manipulation information? Well, first, it is a situational awareness. You need to know what's going on, all those tactics, techniques, and procedures. You need uh, to have good data. We did reports here on the internet for anyone interested, FEMI report EEAS with the European External Action Service and find all the information. Then it's uh, raising awareness and resilience building. It's about really exposing what's there. And it's about also training journalists, fact-checkers, fact media professionals, in order to, for them to understand and be able not to be themselves a victim and disseminate again. Mm -hmm. So that the resilience building, that's all education programs, schools, etc. And then you have uh, the regulation, disruption. Uh, luckily in the EU, we have the Digital Single Act. We have a code of good practice where the platforms really engage in uh, trying to withdraw content that has been manipulated. And we now have also the Intelligence Artificial, Artificial Intelligence Act, sorry, mm -hmm. which is uh, being implemented. So that allows also to see because artificial intelligence has its goods and its bads <laughs> aspect, and it can also be a mean to, to even amplify more manipulation of information. So it's important to address that. So we have this kind of regulation. We would like other countries in the world to also have regulation because we cannot uh, regulate uh, also outside our borders and sometimes manipulation information target the EU, an EU member state outside the EU, our image, our reputation. So we have also to, and we're working on that, it's also very, very important. So I mentioned uh, situational awareness, resilience building, legal and uh, disruption, and force its international action, international cooperation. And that's why we're working with the G7, with NATO, uh, and, and with third countries, partners, in order to also build this uh, consciousness of what's happening, but also having a clear concept. Once again, and we can finalize with this, we, don't, we, we are very attached to freedom of expression. It is not about censoring. It is about fighting some manipulative behavior that really target us to sow distrust which is a very difficult task um, to undertake. Concerning the regulatory framework that is currently in place, uh, is it robust enough or can it still be improved? 
everything can always be improved, you know. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, but I think we have a very solid uh, framework and in the EU we've been the first one in regulating. Uh, sometimes some say we're regulating too much, you know, <laughs> but, but in fact we are and others are looking at us. So they are looking at us at our, how we are taking this, this issue very seriously among other issues because we want to protect our democracy. Oh, my old colleagues, did I get this right? Yes. <laughs> oh, my old colleagues, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we appreciate your thoughts on this very important topic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much to you.